piece of that extra 6K. And as you can see, Pandora already celebrating because he knows that's celebration time. Juicy, here we go, and it's Miner from Pandora. Miner's solid, gonna get picked up by a Golden Knight. Actually, seen the Golden Knight's really two options, right? You got the Drill, maybe got an E-Giant. Pandora with the Prince and the Miner. 100% going to be the Mega Knight deck that we've seen a lot of. And after seeing that Cannon for Mo, definitely going to be a giant. It's interesting that we haven't seen that Mega Knight Wallbreakers Prince deck as much this weekend. You know, it was so it was so dominant last year. Was if you're watching the Queso Cup Teams Edition this uh, this last month in between our monthly finals, it's been played to an insane rate. We haven't seen it as and much I, this I, weekend. Any thoughts on why? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I think that uh, it might be because generally it's a solid deck to have, but against the best of the best, it's very difficult to break through. Really solid defense will always beat this Mega Knight deck just because it is impossible. It's basically reliance on breaking through with like a crazy pressure E Giant Prince Bush. So here we go, Electro Giant plus Bomber. Easy does it against the Inferno Dragon. Mega Knight cleans up the Bomber, and Electro Giant should get DPS without doing any damage to that tower, and that's the case. Huge mistake from Mo here. He played his cannon down one tower too far, and that made it so it wasn't able to side by this Prince, and that's going to be a huge connection for Pandora on the right with the Prince and the Wall Breakers. A lot of people in the chat, of course, super excited to see any weakness out of Mohammed okay. Light. You know, I think the More chat comes down to two things in comments in Clash Royale competitive these days. It's either where's Mo or Mo wins too much. Those are the two the two <laughs> primary comments. So curious to see which camp wins out here. Another mistake for Mo, playing the bomber. One tile too high, allowing the archers to take it out, making this counter a lot less strong. All of this being said, it's still possible for Mo to come back in a matchup like this. All he needs is one good E Giant push. Prince plus Mega Knight plus Inferno Dragon. Inferno Dragon not going to be taken care of, of course, by that Lightning and the Phoenix Pop doesn't get it off the board. So now the stack begins. Inferno Dragon continues to stay on the board as Miner goes down low. Cannon to pick up that Bandit. Interesting Fire Spear the bridge there. That's not going to help on defense. Just barely working out for him. E Giant the bridge. No left side. Interesting play. Maybe he's trying to get some Gold Knight dash value on the right. Let's see the, that tile difference. You talk about that tile difference earlier today, Juicy, and you see right there, not able to pull the trigger and get the E Giant or get the Golden Knight on tower. Cannon trying to pull double duty up high. Cape Tower activation finally for Muhammad Light. And there goes the Lightning on the Prince. It might seem weird, guys, but that is what you need to do to win this matchup. You need to Lightning the Prince and Tornado the Inferno Dragon into the E-Giant to break through. And look at Mohammed Light choosing to just tank the MK damage on the left for a long time, defend the weak side tower, and use that HP as a resource. Can that pay off here? Will it be enough, or does Pandora take game one? And gonna defend this Miner. Bomber gonna pull this Inferno Dragon to the opposite lane. Gold Knight setting up ready for the E-Giant. We're gonna see one come down really soon, I'd say. And those arrows, not quite enough to get that wall breaker through. Electro Giant in front of the Golden Knight. Prince pulled off with the NATO and Lightning for some extra damage. This is huge damage on the left-hand side. This is suddenly a game here, Juicy. One lightning yeah, away, Pandora needs to pressure in order to take this dub. Here comes the Meyer, the wall breakers, but the bomber kills the wall breakers. Arrows are not enough, and the gold knight picks up the Meyer. Lightning gonna finish the game. Mo Light with a huge comeback to take game one. Oh my word. It's just, what do you do? What do you do? It's He's so the best. crazy. He's so He's crazy. The best. <laughs> How do you go that far behind? And you saw everyone seeing the damage. It all comes down to that Mega Knight, letting that Mega Knight tank the left-hand side, knowing he had 2,000 HP he could give away comfortably, and defending the right and staying alive. Just wild. You make a great point there, and don't forget the beautiful Tornado pulling the Prince away from the E-Giant to the Golden Knight, allowing for that massive connection. And you can see the, uh, the smiles from Mo right now. That's his team in his ear, cracking jokes and gassing him up a little bit. 
bomb tower down on the defense versus the RG guards as well. We've seen Mo, I think, play this deck three times, maybe three or four times today. The guards, along with the hog EQ, just so solid on defense. The bomb tower version 7, Inferno here, gonna help out quite nicely versus this in RG. But what Pandora Why has not? to do to break through is get the monk in front of the RG in order to deflect those bomb tower shots. And still gives up one shot from the Hog Rider. Lead for Muhammad Light, both in the match and in the game at the moment. A little bit late on the E Spirit there. Maybe if you get the E Spirit down a little bit quicker, you can stun the Hog at the right moment to allow for that next Hunter shot. And notice the timing on the Archer Queen to avoid the first shot from that Princess Tower on the right hand side. Very nice. Now is there is a Monk kind of pushing Giant Skelly. Variation here going to help out quite nicely on the defense. Guards helping out as well. Phoenix doing a great job of just kind of cleaning everything up while that monk ability tanks so. though. This is Juicy, a slightly thicker version of Hog Cycle, right? You have the six elixir for the giant skeleton. You have the five elixir for the Archer Queen, plus popping the ability as well. Uh, th this doesn't. Have, this still has the ability to out cycle against Pandora, but not as much as other variants might. Absolutely. On the other hand, the guards are very good with the DPS on the RG. In order to break through them, Pandora's gonna have to hit a pre-log plus pre-E spirit to take the shields off and kill the guards completely in order to break through with the RG. Defensively, does this being a little bit slower make that a little bit more palatable for Pandora or is it still the same problem where you're trying to just hope that your fisherman doesn't get distracted at the wrong time like this one right here you know that, that's a great question i do think that a quicker cycle would be more beneficial for mo just because you're able to cycle back to the bond tires on the defense a little bit quicker and also cycle the hogs on the offense with a slower cycle you can see that pandora is able to kind of out cycle himself here with the double rgs and you see the the bomb tower and the ice spirit nearly getting disrupted by that bar barrel. Still, the lead does switch to Pandora, 24-16 to 23-03. Monk of the defense once again. Pandora is most likely gonna get another RG. Mo knows that and he's like, okay, I need to pressure the opposite lane to make sure that doesn't happen right now. Really good giant skelly hog. Phoenix, bar barrel, fisherman doing a great job cleaning everything up though. And now a pretty significant counter push. Healthy Phoenix plus barbarian left hand lane. Monk will get in front and start reflecting on that right-hand lane. Pick up here with the bomb tower on the right-hand side. Monk reflection, is that enough to get the damage in? No, the lead still going for Pandora. And look at the Phoenix on that left-hand tower. The Phoenix was the real threat there. I think Muhammad Light needed to use the log on the left to kill the Phoenix egg. It was that close to the tower. That means a huge Phoenix connection. Guards didn't pick up either, and we're heading into Triple Elixir. Pandora with a massive counter push, though. Giant Skeleton to control in the middle. Monk does go into Reflection. Pretty huge tank, and there you see that log, that Barbarian Barrel, E-Spirit combination that Juicy talked about earlier, getting those guards off the board. RG trying to get a shot off here, and it does connect 880 left, and now we're in Triple. Two Phoenix Eggs on the board, Bomb Tower on the defense, Log does kill them both. RG is gonna get cleaned up pretty well. Nice defense from Mo. He needs to have a nice counter push though as well. There's only 30 seconds left, and Pandora is stifling this counter push with his own monk ability to counter the Arch Queen ability. Pandora in rhythm. Hogs just not able to do anything. And the fireball not quite getting the bomb tower off, not gonna be a problem. Pandora has to defend one more Hog Rider at most, and let's see if Mo You're plays it. Nope, he chooses to just go ahead and reset and get ready for game number three. Pandora having the okay, tournament of his life this weekend. He's playing fantastically. Another game down from Mo. Mo's like shaking it off right now. He needs this game three in order to force it to a next best of three. And Pandora just one game away from the $16,000 grand prize for this monthly finals. We lose. So what does Pandora have in the tank here for game number three? Please. Last time that he played, I was gonna say last time that he played this combination, he went E-Giant game three, not gonna be E-Giant here. Taking a page out of Mo's book with the hog. 
Mo with the firecracker and the monk gonna be taking a page out of Pandora's book with the RG. Pandora, let's get the let's break right with Royal Diamond. An aggressive early push here from Mohammed Light. It's aggressive, but it's good aggression. But the but the monk no, the monk is played a little bit too late. It's gonna die before the ability gets oh, full please. effect. And what a play from Pandora, using the Bontar to push the RG back, but also somehow getting the Bontar to lock onto the RG instead of the monk to prevent that reflection. Well, Still damage up. in lead for Mohammed Light by about 474 HP, if I understand subtraction. No, Arch Queen, just no guarantee, here. by the way. <laughs> Arch Queen gonna take the Hunter. And a nice log here to keep the Archer Queen full health. East Spirit here. Ability is gonna pop, but it's too Ooh. late. Mo, really nice micro there. So you know, cool. Taking out that queen, preventing the ability from getting much value at all. Monk cycling right as we pass the midway point of our opening three 22 02 to 26 18. Lead holding strong for the world champ and adding to it a little bit of firecracker chip. And does he get the monk ability down? Yes, he does. Bontire's getting wow. reflected. RG is being tanked for. That is a very healthy RG on the board. Log's not going to help out much either. Not to mention the firecracker. Wow. Tipping away the tower as well. That tower's all the way down to 263. Firecracker's a serious problem here. And, you know, great pick from Mo and his team here in game number three, recognizing that the ability to get to that firecracker you know, you're talking about what's already out because fireball out, arrows out, and now you're going, well, how do you kill a firecracker in the back? And the answer is, you hope you, you EQ log, but you can't do that that early. And to do it that early because it costs five elixir, not to mention a nice mongoli from Mo preventing the log from coming through. I deflect that log to keep the firecracker alive. Good patience by Pandora, but the firecracker already got its value. And the other thing about the firecracker, look at that. Once one dies, there's another one going to drop very quickly. Yeah, just just really next level choices here at the end. Hunter and Fisherman will be sufficient to prevent any meaningful damage here. Muhammad Light throws a fireball, and we're going to reset this bracket. Play it back, folks. $6,000 best of three coming your way. Now the question is, can Pandora reset that tombst or uh, excuse me with that Ram Rider being a little bit more popular? But you know, here we go. Uh, I think all three of us are on the cast for this one. Mo definitely switching it up a little bit. We haven't seen Spears, we haven't seen Golden Knight out of him much today. Yeah, and it's the you know minor control with Golden Knight NATO. So typically he's been saving Golden Knight and or NATO for for other decks. We've seen it a lot, of course, in E Giant scene. NATO making its place in in drill as apparently as our Golden Knight NATO and drill, but using it here in minor. Juicy, what does that tell Pandora about the remaining deck pool for Mo that Golden Knight NATO are here as, as part of this minor deck? I mean, that means no E Giant. We've seen Mo use E Giant a lot, and with the Golden Knight NATO out, that is not going to be a possibility. You guys are wondering why you need Tornado with E Giant. It's because Without the tornado, you're not able to pull things into the reflection radius to help you on the defense, but also on the offense. Wow, that was just a really yeah. nice NATO combo there in timing with the Prince, or excuse me, the Golden Knight to make sure that Hog Musketeer combo didn't get too much damage. I think here uh, for this and Juice, maybe you could feel this is just like, Mo already recognized, I even saw his eyebrows pop up a little bit when the gar the goblins came out to defend the miner. It's all going to have to be mighty miner to pick up those miners throughout, especially later on, because you feel like Mo's just going to miner poison everything else that gets dropped. Yeah, that's a great point. Miner poison gets a lot of value, but at the same time, goblins, one of the best prong to use versus a with the golden knight. For example, we'll see a lot of miners kind of pushing with the gold knight with a miner in the front of the tower. If the goblins drop on the miner, then the tornado gold knight will always connect the tower. So we're gonna have to innovate a little bit defensively as Pandora. Easily cleaned up here though for Pandora and we're going into sudden death overtime. Lead for Mohammed Light, dual lane pressure early on and just a nice little NATO back into the middle and you know you have nato bomb tower ice spirit is that sufficient for mo to continue these pretty clean defenses juicy given the cycle 
absolutely. Hog Rider gets countered almost by the the best Hog Rider counter in the game is the Tornado. Having a building alongside that should mean zero Hog connections. Pandora is going to have to rely on Earthquake almost as his main win condition in order just to continually cycle those and spell cycle the tower down. And trying to find a way to break on through here. There you go, Andrew. I was going to say, it's it's so tough, and Pandora trying to beat out the cycle here, but there's so many good responses to get on top. You know, like Juicy said, the Earthquake is going to be one of the best damage dealers, and there might be a good moment for a Hog plus Goblin, since, you know, Mo doesn't have Log, but Mo has so many other good ways to control that push. But the thing is, the Goblins don't have much of a place in this matchup other than maybe doing something like that. Spears high for more pressure. Minute 17, now 16 remaining in this game number one of our bracket reset. And just so many different ways. Now you're just seeing pull Nate, now that King Tower's activated, pull it to the middle with Nato. Ice Spear for some safety. And this looks like it might be a calibration needed for Pandora, as this one seems like it's slipping away from him with just 50 seconds left to go. I don't, I don't know how to play through this, honestly. And then you see there, Mo doing a great job. The second that that Mighty Miner's out of cycle, he goes Miner, poison to the tower, because at worst, it's going to get good tower damage and miss something like a Musketeer like we just saw. At best, it's going to get on top of Goblins, a Musky, what have you. Hog trying to sneak on through. We'll get a couple of shots here, oh, or at least just wow. a little touch of being there. Just stare word. at the tower, yeah. Ice Spirit is just that guy. Absolutely yeah. freezing that <laughs> Hog Rider and preventing any sort of hits. And That's Ice a great way to put it. <laughs> All right, so you talked about RG before, Andrew, on side of Muhammad Light. Log is out and Mighty Miner is out. So it does seem like RG certainly an opening. With NATO out, do we see Pandora go in a minor direction? I was gonna say, but then Mo just goes hoggy Q and like just does what he does. So I, I, I really don't know. I don't know, Juicy. Do you have any ideas here of what Pandora or Mo? And there it is. Aha. I mean, at least I got that right. Dude, I was literally gonna say, I bet Pandora runs RG with Tombstone and I bet Mo runs hoggy Q and I only got half of that out. That's already GG. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I think the RG Tombstone is decent versus hoggy Q because you have the building, the Tombstone able to play high and prevent anti-earthquake placements, whereas the Fisherman also a great counter to the Hog Rider. But with the start here, it's really difficult for Pandora to come back already, especially with this Mighty Miner as one of the best counters to the Royal Giant. Oof. Yeah, put that put that on the wall and uh, and frame it. Oof. Quote from... Yeah. I know, I'll explain that for all of us, Andrew, because <laughs> I think that's what everyone's feeling right now. I mean, dude, it's already over. I mean, literally, for, oh. if, I, if I'm able to call that Moe's going to go Hog EQ, and I know that Pandora's going to go RG, <laughs> and we haven't seen RG Tombstone, it feels like there was no the ball drop somewhere. If I'm able right. to figure all that out and I get roasted for picking, you know, wrong wind yeah. conditions all the time, I'll own it. <laughs> I feels like there's a problem that happened. And this one pretty well sewn up here. Uh, Pandora not going to throw in the towel quite yet. Going to try to fight his way through this one, but looking dire early. And Mo just goes immediate mortar high, and Pandora's going to eat it and try to break through. And it really is tough to watch because, like I said, it's not a bad matchup for Pandora. He's got the Tombstone, he's got the Fisherman, he even has the Zappies for the Mighty Miner. It's just really tough because of the start he had and also um, Mo just continually applying that pressure with the elixir, early elixir advantage and keep stacking on troops on troops. Not to mention that Fisherman not pulling that hogger and left at the beginning. He got distracted by the Mighty Miner earlier. So well, victory lap time as Mo sets up the mortar. And this is just a, such a strange way to end, right? Because Mohammed Light, back-to-back -back monthly champion, now joining his longtime friend and rival Lucas and being the only two back-to-back. -back, oh, I can't uh, wait for that on Twitter. I'm sure Lucas is going to be thrilled about Mo getting back-to-backs. That's the only thing he's ever hoped for, honestly, I believe. <laughs> um, so now Mo 